I hope and I've been praying that you've been growing in excitement and an understanding of the Eucharist, of Jesus's true presence, his body, blood, soul, and divinity at every Eucharist, at every mass. You understand a little bit more theology. You understand a little bit more philosophy. You're able to, to even come to a greater faith just by realizing just how much our Lord desires to be among us and not just among us, but in us and with us and united to us. Isn't that what the Eucharist is? It is this humble submission of Jesus to come in the form of bread and wine so that he can be one with us. Even though we can understand all of these things through theology, philosophy, through our a greater faith and in, of prayer, even though we can understand that, there's still something lacking, right? Because what's lacking is our human minds just don't grasp the divine mind of God. It's so beyond us, as, as, as great as our minds are, they're not divine. And so there's a wisdom beyond our understanding. And that's where faith takes off. That's where faith gets us there and takes us there and makes us one with the Lord. You know, but there's sometimes that our Lord understands that and, and he gives us at times extraordinary circumstances, extraordinary shows of, of, of his power and his desires that we call miracles so that we can even excite a greater faith and greater devotion to what is actually true and what he desires us to know. Some of those are called Eucharistic miracles. There's a great book of Eucharistic miracles that you could check out. You can find all of those miracles online, I'm sure as well. One of those miracles happened in 1996 in Buenos Aires, Argentina. There was a priest who was celebrating mass in the evening. After mass, there was a woman who came to him and holding in her hands, just as if she was coming up for communion, holding in her hands, she had a fragmented host. Someone had received the host, taken it back to their pew and had crushed it for whatever reason. She was one who believed that every single piece of that fragment, uh, fragmented host was Jesus's body and blood, soul, and divinity. So she brought that host forward and she brought it to the priest. The priest took that host and because of its state, he was unable to consume it, but he placed it in the tabernacle. The next morning he came back and overnight, this, was, this priest was the only one who had access to the key to that tabernacle. He goes back the next morning. The next morning, it had changed its state. Somehow it's accidents, right? The outside, the appearance of it had changed. And what he saw was it just wasn't a clean host, but it looked as if it were fleshy and as if it were bleeding. And so of course, not being able to explain it with his own words and not able to understand it and suspecting that there was something extraordinary going on here. He did what, what any of us would do. We'd call someone of higher authority or get some more eyes on it. He calls his cardinal. The Cardinal of Buenos Aires, Argentina at that time was a man named Cardinal Bergoglio. You might recognize that name because he is the one who will become Pope Francis. So the Cardinal came over, the Cardinal saw this. They submitted this to a greater investigation of scientists. The long at the short of it is, this scientist sent it to a cardiologist in New York City, a Dr. Zugiba. And this was one of the greatest cardiologists in the entire world, most renowned. When he investigated this, his investigation came back and he said, I don't know what you brought me. It's kind of hard to understand. He said, but I can identify that what you brought me is part of a human heart of the upper left ventricle, the part of the heart that, that pumps blood throughout the entire body. So I can tell it comes from that part. What I can't understand is how you got this from a living heart. He said that when this piece was taken, the heart is still alive. And I said, I know that because it's full of white blood cells. White blood cells can't exist outside of a living heart. He said, There's, it's full of white blood cells that I still see there. That I, I can't explain this. I don't understand. He also said that there's something interesting about this heart, that the white blood cells were pushing out of the, of the tissue, meaning that this heart came from a person who was severely beaten. That's what happened to white blood cells when, 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 it's in, when a heart is in great distress. He said he could tell all of these things. Only then did they reveal to him what he was actually looking at, that this was a Eucharistic host from a Catholic mass, that this was Jesus's body and blood, soul and divinity. And those are just, that's just one story of many, many Eucharistic miracles that we can tell about our Lord, giving us extraordinary measures to show us uh, and excite in us a greater devotion for his body, blood, soul and divinity in that Eucharist, that we know that's what we receive in every host even if our hosts don't appear to be bleeding. Remember, the substance has changed. That's what it truly is. Today, we give thanks to God for all of his extraordinary measures. But remember that we don't need extraordinary measures to come to great faith. That what we receive in every single Eucharist is the humility of our Lord who comes to us, desires to be with us, 
and has union with us in that Eucharistic host.